In this demonstration, you'll learn how to set up a transient blade row problem to model neighboring blade aerodynamic influences on a stator blade using frozen gust analysis with the Fourier transformation pitch change method. A frozen gust analysis is also known by some as an inlet disturbance analysis. The case geometry is a two and a half stage axial compressor consisting of an IGV with 26 blades and two stages. The first rotor, rotor 1, contains 23 blades, while the second rotor, rotor 2, contains 27 blades. Stator 1 and 2 contain 30 and 32 blades, respectively. The original geometry, which consisted of 4.5 stages, was provided courtesy of TFD Hanover. For this case, I want to model the influence of the rotor 1 wake and the potential field from rotor 2 on the stator 1 blades. To reduce the computational cost and to avoid transient full blade coupling, a frozen gust analysis will be used. In frozen gust analysis, only the stator 1 row will be modeled with front and back rotor blade influences described by inflow and outflow disturbances. Typically, inlet and outlet profiles are initially extracted from a steady state stage simulation. To further reduce the computational cost, the Fourier transformation method will be utilized to solve the frozen gust analysis on two stator 1 passages. At this point, I have run a steady state simulation on this case using the rotor stator mixing plane model. Now I want to collect accurate profiles illustrating the rotor 1 wake and the rotor 2 potential field. These can be exported by loading the steady state results file in CFD post and selecting the export option. In the export dialog box, I'll set my CSV files name and location. This is a boundary condition inlet total pressure profile that will export data describing the pressure, temperature, and velocity of the fluid entering the stator 1 inlet in a rotating frame. Likewise, I'll export a CSV file describing the pressure condition experienced by the stator due to rotor 2. This is a boundary condition outlet pressure profile. Next, I'll open up my transient blade row case setup and add these profiles. You'll notice that only two stator blade passages have been imported into this case. Since the influence of the front and back rotors will be accounted for using the boundary conditions profile, that portion of the mesh can be ignored. Now I want to use the profiles I created to describe the fluid flowing through the stator 1 domain. To do this, I must first expand the profile data such that it can be applied to the full geometry. In the Edit Profile dialog box, I'll select my profile, create a new profile, Select the Initialize New Profile option and specify the number of passages in the total geometry. Rotor 1 contains 23 blades, so I'll expand my inlet profile to 23 passages. Note that initializing a profile creates a user function describing the fluid flow at the specified location. Likewise, Rotor 2 has 27 blades, so I must expand my outlet profile to cover 27 passages. Conveniently, I can view plots describing each state variable exported for each profile. I'll turn on the visibility of the outlet pressure profile, which describes the pressure contour generated by the potential field of the 27 rotor 2 blades. Similarly, data regarding all relevant state variables for the inlet profile have been exported. Here's the expanded profile describing the wake of the 23 rotor 1 blades. Finally, I'll apply the expanded inlet and outlet profile data to the inlet and the outlet of the stator 1 domain. To do this, I'll select the Use Profile Data option and select the appropriate profile. The stator does not rotate, but the inlet and outlet profiles will, in a sense, rotate through the simulation. To describe this, I'll create a new rotating coordinate frame. This frame will have an angular velocity equivalent to that of the adjacent rotors. Now I'll set the stator inlet and outlet to use this coordinate frame. This will rotate the profiles about the stator as the simulation proceeds. This concludes part 1 of this demonstration. In part 2, I'll show you how to set up Fourier transformation interfaces and post-process the results for a frozen gust analysis.